Welcome one and all to Tech Tales. Today I have the tale of the most badass card ever. Now what is this card exactly? Well let me show you. It comes out tomorrow, March 10th. Now a lot of people have had it and I've also had it and I bought it and I bought two. I should get the second one soon. Uh, the GTX 1080. Well, okay. TI. So I wanted to talk a quick bit about this card. This is based on the GP102, which stands for the GeForce Pascal 102 chipset, which is the same exact chipset as the, as can be found pretty much on the uh, Titan XP, which is that $1,200 card that made a lot of people's wallets cry. Now, when Nvidia announced their Pascal structure, and let me put that down. When Nvidia announced their Pascal structure, everyone was excited. Okay, what's, what's this gonna bring? Is it gonna bring stacked memory, HBM2? What's gonna happen? Well, no, it didn't bring any of that, but it did bring the GTX 1080 GTX. And, you know, initially it was great. Like, it's great. I have my own, if you guys shot, saw it on the intro shot, I have my own uh, 1080 FTW uh, 2 by EVGA, which I also bought, um, with the ICX cooler. Now, that thing is a beast, and it overclocks very well. Not 980 Ti well, but good enough. And, you know, essentially, the Titan X was the king for a solid year, and at a $1,200 price point, well, you know, and it was, it was a tough buy, even for me, when I was looking at the price for it, I'm like, and it was selling out like gangbusters to a lot of developers, uh, game processing developers, stuff like that. It was selling to a lot of these people. And what ended up happening was that there became all these rumors and people started dreaming about the 1080 Ti, at least I know that I did. When they announced the 1080, I was like, well, 980, 980 Ti. So of course the 1080 Ti is coming, but, at CES 2017, what did they do? They didn't announce it. So, because they didn't announce it and everyone was panicking and very confused, there were all these rumors going around that there was a 1080 Ti that was like $900. It was, you know, it was too expensive and all this other stuff. Like it was a really, really expensive card. But luckily for all of us, those rumors weren't true. So essentially the card, the G GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, start shipping tomorrow from nvidia.com. Pre-orders are sold out. They were sold out within 30 minutes of when it went live. And it's a $699 card. So it has the same GP102 structure. However, all they did was they just disabled a few of the SM shaders uh, you know, on the card. So there's only about 28 SM units and um, it's a 352-bit bus that sports an 11 gigabyte of GDDR5X memory, and thank God, it's GDDR5X. Why? Because nobody wants GDDR5. Okay, well, maybe I want GDDR5, and so do hundreds of other people, but you get what I mean. GDDR5 and 10 gigabytes, which was the rumor, and all this for $800, $900. There's people saying it might be $1,000. You know, these, you know, it's crazy, but you know, when I initially said it, I really thought it was going to be around 649, so I was $50 off. I thought it was going to be $649, and you know, essentially Nvidia, a lot of people were saying Nvidia made a mistake. The 980 Ti was a mistake. They didn't mean to make it beat the Titan X Maxwell. Well, I call bullshit on that. Of course it's meant to beat the Titan X Maxwell, and it was a very, uh, very solid move on part of NVIDIA, which, which I believed it was a solid move, and luckily again, history repeats itself. 1080 Ti is also the what 980 Ti was. It is now beating the Titan X. So, anyways, now that I've covered everything, I wanted to cover one quick thing in terms of the specs. It is still an eight and a six pin spec. It's 699 MSRP, comes out tomorrow as a hard launch. Now, one key difference to everyone watching is there is a change in reference design. Now, what this means is that the reference has been changed. There's a new thermal de design that has a, you know, the same vapor chamber cooling, and, but the problem, the well, not the problem, the solution is that they increase the area and they put in a seven phase dual FET 
uh, pretty much uh, to provide cleaner power, more efficient, less heat all around. And so you're getting more power um, for the same power uh, TDP consumption. And also at the same time, you have 14 dual FETs, which uh, really helps to bring that margin up further from the 1080. And we can really see that efficiency has changed quite a bit. So efficiency is the one thing that they wanted to touch upon in terms of how does this become faster than a Titan X at half the cost? Because they didn't really tell us when 980 Ti launched and people were just like, oh my God, this is this is amazing. This is super duper cool. We just somehow got a Titan X for next to nothing. No, you got it because Nvidia was working to push things forward, not backwards, forwards. So anyways, what I'm gonna do here in this test is I'm going to simply benchmark the 1080 Ti. Now, I don't have the second 1080 Ti yet. I want to do SLI and I want to do uh, fr a you know, frame capture analysis tool that NVIDIA has provided, the FCAT, and I want to go ahead and do that here as well on TechTales. So that would be a fun little tale. Huh? Yeah, okay. So a fun little tale to talk about. So Anyways, I tested on an EVGX X99 with the i7-5930 and the 378.78 beta release for these drivers. Now, enough talk, so let's get to the nitty gritty. What am I testing? Now, I'm testing the four top games. No, I'm not testing Wildlands. Everyone says test Wildlands. It's barely been out. They need to patch the crap out of it. It isn't a good measure for benchmarking. Sorry, not sorry. So I'm testing Battlefield 1, Doom, Grand Theft Auto 5, and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now let's take a look at these this chart here. Or actually, you know what? Forget the chart. Forget it. No charts. I don't want to do charts anymore. So I'm going to tell you, and you guys are going to trust it. If you don't, whatever. It's fine. So <laughs> anyways, it'll be like a fairy tale myth. Um, so on Battlefield 1, in comparison to the 980 Ti and the 1080 Ti and the 1080, actually, I might just go ahead and put all these benchmarks on in the description of the video just, just to make it fair and give you guys something to read. But essentially what we have is that the frame rate is at 4K and at ultra, this thing is averaging 80 FPS from 65 to 80 average the only game where this thing struggled was grand theft auto 5 and by struggled i mean passed with flying colors 51.7 with everything turned up you know we're talking multi-sample anti-aliasing we're talking 16 times anisotropic filtering we are talking the works 50 fps 4k now is it really the car that's gonna get you to 60 FPS, um, you know, necessarily speaking, at 4K? The answer, you know, if, is a resounding yes. I mean, you know, minus, of course, you're gonna have to tweak some settings still. You can't just uh, set multi-sample anti-aliasing to maximum, but I did it anyways, just to really see how much we can push this beast, the $699 beast, it is magical it is a beautiful monstrosity and when i say monstrosity i'm not calling it horrific i'm saying this thing is a beast you should be afraid of it but you should love it like that girl that loves king kong she loves king kong right i don't know so that girl who loves king kong this thing is king kong love it anyways but it's still freaky how good th this thing is for 4k at ultra settings now moving on we are going to be talking about one thing I noticed that no reviewers are really touching upon, and it's my personal gaming preference, is ultra wide. Now, ultra wide does have its problems. You know, you still need to rely on developer support to patch 21 by 9 in, and of course, you know, the games look beautiful. Now, ultra wide is even better than 4K. We're talking you can easily hit 100 to 100 and, you know, seven frames on Grand Theft Auto 5 all across the board in comparison to the 1080s about 80 85 at ultra wide now again at 4k the 1080 was doing an average of about you know dare I say it was uh, from f anywhere from 
fifth, you know, from... I guess one could say it was from 55, you know, to 265 is, is a fair guesstimate because, again, we cranked everything up for our testing. Uh, and anyways, I cranked everything up. And, you know, it, it gives a real good benchmark at what's at the extreme of this thing. Now, the 1080 at 4K is roughly doing very well with everything cranked up. It is managing to do anywhere from 30 to 55 frames per second. Now, you know, Grand Theft Auto 5 and The Witcher, you know, Witcher's averaging about 40, Grand Theft Auto's in the 30s, and then Doom and Battlefield 1's in, you know, in the higher 50s, closer to 60, when you crank everything up. Now, is this a chance of optimization, etc.? Well, you know what, it's a lot of factors we don't know, but at the end of the day, you know, in terms of Analyzing the quality of the card and, and the bracket margins of the frames per second, you can clearly see that the 1080 Ti is, on average, just a better card. Now, one thing Nvidia did at this conference, they they showed this table from the 980 to 980 Ti and, and from the 780 to 780 Ti, and then they showed the 1080 to 1080 Ti and they said it's 35% faster. Now, if you take the average of all the frames and you do all the math, yes, it is faster. It is almost 37% faster on average. That's right, 37% on stock. And this thing was super cool. We are talking barely 75 degrees Celsius. Now this is amazing. And for ultra wide, this is guys, this is what you really want at ultra wide. Now, if you are interested in doing 144 Hertz and really super fast, you know, vomiting inducing <laughs> frames per second is your thing. Not my thing. I don't personally care for 144 Hertz, but if it is your thing that at 144 Hertz, you probably want to, you know, not worry about the 4K because this thing isn't going to get you to 4K 144 Hertz. What it is going to get you to, however, is probably something below, you know, two steps below 4K, maybe 1440p and get you to that 144 mark on a single card. That is a big deal. Now, so Nvidia claimed it was 35% faster, is 37% faster way amazing now overclocking wise i don't like to overclock my video card but i went ahead and did it 2000 megahertz and i got a 4700 megahertz clock speed about and you know you see about 12 percent gain so imagine 37 percent plus 12 percent that's how much faster this thing can be over a 1080. now over a titan x as stock this thing is about 19 percent faster now but if you you know obviously if you overclock it this thing can easily beat the titan x easily way more than you know it's it's it can easily do it way more than 19 percent we're talking in roughly 20 to 25 percent faster than a titan x if you overclock it so how is the gtx 1080 ti should i buy this thing for 699 what should i do yeah buy it it's great what are you waiting for like do it man i did it i bought it i have it you know i got it and so all in all what's left you know this is really the king of graphics cards this is the creme de la creme the king mula the simba of the linen king the mufasa of linen king i don't know it's a lot of central characters of a lot of things this is an awesome card and it's really gonna guarantee 4k at 60 fps provided you might crank down still some of those insane settings you don't need at 4k anyways <clears throat> msaa and you know, only for $699, this card is literally a steal. Sure, it's not $649. Sure, after taxes, it will become $750. I know. I understand. I get it. And also, of course, shipping and all that stuff. Maybe $765, $770. Um, but, you know, the one thing you guys should know is, you know, whatever version of this you can get will be superior. Now, a lot of people are saying the add-in boards are different than the reference. The reference will is gonna be worse than the add-in board cards, the partner cards. 
that's just not true. The partner cars will be cooler, but the Nvidia really pushed out their engineering team to make this reference card completely different and unrelatable to the past trends where the reference card always came a little bit under those partner cards. Sure, you might get better cooling, you might get slightly one to 2% overclocking because of it, but in no way, shape or form will yours be better than a Founders Edition, which the reference is based on. And that's just simply how the pattern has always been, despite a lot of mainstreamers thinking that if I get that Strix or if I get that EVGA for the win, my card's going to be, you know, 50 times better than the reference card. It's just not true. It's probably, you know, one to two percent better. And that converts into frame rates at three FPS on average. So it's fine. Doesn't matter. Order it from NVIDIA.com if that's the way you can get it. Don't pay scalpers on eBay for this thing. Get this card. It is awesome. Now, what do we have left in 2018 now that NVIDIA has delivered the king of 4K? Well, we have HBM2 stack memory. We have Volta. And who knows where that's going to bring us. If they can match the 4K at 60, bring in stack memory. That would be something I would love to review and buy. And I will buy it if that is the case. So anyways, that is the tale for today, my little dollops. I'll catch you another day.